Yeah, guys, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I really appreciate you guys putting this together. Uh, I think it's, it's there's a lot of effort that goes into this, and you guys are doing an awesome job. And I appreciate you guys inviting me to to give a talk about this. It's something that is very interesting to me. So I appreciate it. Hey guys, so um, I'll be talking about Flutter version management um, and touch on a couple of different um, ideas that, that we've been exploring with Flutter and Dart. And we use that VM as a, as a way to explore some of these concepts. So I'm gonna be going through um, what is FVM, uh, how FVM works, uh, our experience building uh, with Flutter Desktop, and also a little bit into how we see cross-platform dev tools specifically with Dart and Flutter, okay? So a little bit about me. I'm CEO and CTO of Concept Tech uh, as a development agency located in Orlando, Florida. And I'm also founding CTO of FinHero.com. Uh, FinHero is a uh, OTT platform and we're currently using Flutter to power our uh, apps, right? And you can uh, follow me on Twitter, Leo A. Farias. Okay, so for you guys that don't know, what is FVM? So simple name, <laughs> Flutter version management. And the goal is to be a simple CLI and GUI to manage uh, Flutter SDK versions. So what is the motivation behind FVM and how did it come to be? So uh, in the company, while we're exploring the next stack for uh, mobile development, uh, we had a heavy focus on Android uh, because of um, developing markets um, where there's a lot of uh, uh, you know Android phones and not the higher end Android phones. So we started to uh, explore and validate Flutter uh, before version 1.0. And that's somewhere in between 2018. Nowadays, like the years kind of just blend together and I skipped 2020. <laughs> but it's, it, we started validating Flutter uh, before 1.0. And while we're validating Flutter and we're exploring, you know, checking out what is the latest, what is on master, you know, what is the current feature set on the, the, the stable. Uh, there's a couple of things that we we noticed right away, right? Uh, first thing is that you can only have one Flutter SDK version in your machine at a time. So uh, uh, if you follow the install instructions, it, it kind of goes into making the assumption that you're only going to have one Flutter uh, setup. And in our mind, that that made sense at the time. It's a similar process to receive here an iOS developer that you see with Xcode, where you can have multiple versions of Xcode, but essentially you only have one, one running at a time and you have to do a switch. Right, so uh, there's one version running at a time. Uh, because we're uh, before version 1.0 when we relying on some uh, features that were still not there like platform views and the video play and things like that, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of the development happen on non-stable channels. So it's very common for us to develop on top of the master channel, on top of the dev channel, that's all the beta. So that switch happened as we had an issue or something like that, we had to switch between those channels uh, to see exactly what was happening or try out a new feature. Uh, and, you know, sometimes we would have an issue of regression and we had to test how it was meant for channels. So they just created a workflow that we had the need to multiple times per day switch um, Flutter SDK versions, right? And as you guys know, uh, switching recar the download the full SDK and its dependencies we're gonna touch on a, a little bit on, and it's low, right? And it's not just about downloading, it's that when you're switching, you have to do that all over again. Um, and we had multiple developers working in the project and we start seeing inconsistent environments where the whole, it worked for me, right? But my machine is running, it started happening because of uh, the channel or the version that they're using in Flutter. So that's overall what the motiv motivation uh, came from uh, for FVM. So FVM had initially two very simple goals. First is, are we able to download, set up, and cache multiple versions of the Flutter SDK? And second, 
would there allow us for a fast switch between Flutter versions if needed, right? So by having multiple versions cache, could I, you know, switch between versions fairly easily? So if you go into the Flutter um, installation instructions, then it has changed since we kind of started that, but even nowadays, if you ask what is a Flutter install, Flutter has a way for you to download a whole zip that has all the dependencies and things like that which is something that uh, is not needed. You, you can do it on demand. But if you're going to, what is Flutter install? What does it mean when you're installing Flutter? So the instructions that Flutter uh, describe is, as you can see, it's very simple, right? You're cloning the Flutter repository, okay? And also, even on the instruction, it tells you that you can actually pick the branch and you can do a shallow clone uh, in order to be able to bring it in. After that, all you have to do is export the path of the binary within the, the clone repo, okay? So there's a couple other interesting things about the install. So when you clone the repo, what's inside the repo? So as most of you guys probably know, we have a version of Dart, okay? The, the, the Dart executable is here. We have the Flutter 2 executable here. and and I, I put an asterisk there. There's a lot more that goes into this, right? It's not everything that is in Flutter is there. But uh, just this specific uh, pen folder is interesting because inside you also find some internals, okay? And the inter internals itself, they're interesting because they uh, pinpoint to uh, dependencies that uh, Flutter after the clone will have to install, right? So if you pull up, for example, the engine.version, you can see, if you open up that file, you're gonna see a hash there. And uh, that's actually a commit hash. And if you go into the Flutter engine itself and use that commit hash for the URL, you can actually see the, the commit itself that is being pulled, right, uh, for the Flutter engine itself. So any points you can see exactly what is the Flutter uh, version of the Flutter engine, which commit is there. And that's something that uh, Simon from uh, Flutter Community, which you guys know very well, walked me through and, and I thought it was very interesting uh, on the way this is being built uh, because it means that it's being built pretty much on demand, okay? So what does this mean, right? And this was interesting when we started exploring. So first it means that the Flutter SDK tooling and dependencies are self-contained, right? A clone repository of Flutter has it in itself all the references of all the dependencies that it needs to build itself and run, okay? That, that is a very interesting approach and you don't see that type of approach uh, fairly often from SDKs and things like that, but it's very interesting. Uh, another one is that the Flutter 2 downloads platform specific development, uh, platform specific development binaries as needed. So there's a couple of ways for you to download the Flutter, uh, you know, SDK. One is for you to download with all its, its dependencies, which uh, I think you're gonna be at a couple of gigs or a few gigs. Another one is for you to do a shallow clone, which will put around 80 megabytes or so. And when you first run Flutter, it will start downloading its dependencies on demand, right? So first download this dependencies is then just to run. And then if you need to run on Android or iOS, it will then download any development dependency binaries, which it means that you, you have almost this uh, a flexible uh, on-demand SDK that it, it doesn't have to, you're not using it for things that let's say are not needed, right? So, and another thing it means that caching multiple versions should be fairly straightforward, right? Uh, everything, it's already there, okay? And uh, uh, this was interesting because it made the job much easier as it was not depending on these global uh, let's say global dependencies, uh, which will make the process much more difficult. Okay, so I'm gonna give a, a quick high level on uh, how FVM caching works. And it's a very simple, overly simplified version, but this is exactly what it's doing. So the first thing is that when you, uh, what FVM is doing is pretty much exposing uh, new APIs in order to manage uh, these versions. It's not modifying Flutter versions, it's not changing Flutter versions, it's not enhancing Flutter CLI tools. Uh, FPM 
as the name describes, is working to manage the Flutter SDK versions, okay? So one thing that it does is it clones all the Flutter versions within a cache directory, right? Now with that comes a, a few different options. Initially, we built this to be focused on channels, right, or release channels. However, as you build apps and you find apps that are fairly stable and they work well, it might be an option to actually pin the actual version itself. So it's not just, hey, I want the latest stable. No, I want version 1.20, uh, point, uh, point all right, uh, point 0. Th that's the version I want. Every time I build this app, that's the version that I want to, to use. So that, that was an interesting uh, quick win. Another thing that we do is, is doing a shallow clone uh, to improve performance. So as I mentioned, there's many ways for you to download Flutter and pretty much we're looking to, uh, there's many uh, people all over the world, right? With uh, different bandwidths and sometimes on the go, sometimes I'm in the airport and I wanna download it and things like that. So how can we make the experience as good as possible and make sure that we conserve the, on the bandwidth uh, as much as possible, right? And it does some safety checks to make sure that uh, when it's cloned, that is a valid install. It's something that can be run and it can be set up correctly, right? And if it doesn't do that, it'll go ahead and move through it and do a cleanup, right? So FDM caching is very simple, right? It's cloning repositories into a folder and just making sure that these repositories that are there are actually healthy cloned versions of Flutter that can be run, right? Leo, I think that your mic just got cut somehow. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that was cool. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. I was going to get to the really good stuff now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's a few uh, ways to configure uh, and use FVM. Um, and this is interesting. And I think this is the beauty of open source, right? Initially, when we built uh, FVM, we could uh, then a tool that works in a, a specific way, and we would jump through our own hoops to make sure that it fits our workflow, right? Now, once we put it out there, we start getting feedback. In some cases, they are, I'll say very common, maybe they're not common for us, but they're very common for any developer working with Flutter, right? So after we have this underlying uh, uh, engine set up, there's a couple quick wins of things that we could do. One is, it's not so much about fast switching and only having and be able to switch between channels is actually being able to pin a flat SDK version to a project and not have to worry about it, right? So uh, even while building, and that's when you know, uh, I think you build something useful, is to build FVM, I had to use FVM because I was always switching between the master channel and I'll get into that because of, of, of Windows uh, it was still a master and on dev, and on the Mac version, I was using dev. So even on that scenario, uh, you, you have, even if it's the same product, sometimes you're able to do that. And people have been able to even run multiple branches, right? So for example, if you have a development branch of your project or a release branch, you can actually use a stable version. So in doing development, you can use a different version. We've seen people use this type of workflows. And, uh, Another basic workflow is the global Flutter SDK, right? Which is the, let's say the default. Flutter is gonna run globally and I want to switch between stable globally or maybe I want to use master globally, right? So FVM uh, allows uh, for this as well. Okay, so how to use uh, FVM, right? And this is the actual short version. I invite you guys to look at uh, github.com slash leoaffairs slash fvm and really give insight on the docs. Uh, one thing that I see when uh, contributing to open source is the amount of blind spots that sometimes documentation has because you know you built it or people know these flaws and you already created a process to work around these flaws and things are not clear. So whenever people open up issues, the first thing I say, hey, if this is not clear to you, Give me suggestions, what is missing? How can we make this a little bit cleaner, right? But this is the, the short version. Once you have FVM installed, right? Uh, you can, uh, within the project directory, you can just use FVM, use stable, okay? 
as soon as you run this command, there's a couple things will happen. First, it will download and pin the, the uh, pin the versions of the project, meaning it creates a configuration that says, hey, this project now runs the stable version, right? If I use version 1.2, uh, uh, you know, of version 1.0, for example, I can go ahead and pin that version and it will be version 1.0 that is pinned to that first thing. If FEM sees that this version is already installed, it will actually configure the project and link it uh, to the cached version itself. So the download does not happen again, right? And we go through the process of creating a sim link into the cache version. And the reason the sim link is important because the sim link is what allows us to support IDE properly, right? So when you when you have that sim link, it means that it's not just about I can use the command line, but now I can reference the sim link version on my project. And when I switch between versions of the project, the debugging on the ID and the tooling around the ID will also be pointing to the new version. And this is is a, a great uh, a scenario and it creates a little bit of the seamless workflow of the VM becomes a first class citizen of Flutter because everything that we try to do is support Flutter tooling, right? One of the biggest challenges that we have with VM is saying no of things that we think it should be done on Flutter or we get in, the, uh, we get in front of what the Flutter seller should be, should be done, right? So that is something that is very important to know exactly what is the, the goal and the focus of the project so you don't get sidetracked and also you support the toolings uh, that are being used. Okay, and once you have the, the Flutter, we have now, uh, there's a couple of ways also to run Flutter. One is to link to the global version. You can look at the docs. Uh, another one is like I mentioned, using the IDE. However, if you wanna use on the command line, uh, one of the ways we do that is by using FVM Flutter command. So all you do is whatever Flutter command you need to run, you put FVM in front of it. And what it's doing, right? And if you look at the code, there's around four or five lines of code. And all it does is send a proxy the commands to the Flutter SDK, right? So there's nothing between, we're not extending, we're not doing anything different. However, the reason that FEM uh, Flutter command is needed on the CLI is to avoid manual configuration. And also it allows a couple decisions to be made on the routing. First is, is there an FEM config in this project? If so, use that version. If not, let me look if there's ancestors to this. Is it a monorepo? Or maybe I have a, a workspace in my operating system for stable uh, versions, right? So it does an ancestor lookup. And if it cannot find anything, then it will default to the, let's say the global Flutter version, right? So by running FEM Flutter, it's important to know there's many different ways that you know, uh, developers are very uh, uh, opinionated about their workflows. And that's one thing uh, we try to do with FEM is making things uh, fairly flexible and also not as opinionated, right? Hey, here's this, some rules, but how you choose to organize your project, your workflow is up to you, okay? So after a lot of feedback, uh, the community and contributions, we had some great contributions, especially uh, from, uh, uh, you know, uh, from China where some of the APIs they were trying to do, they're being blocked and adding things like that. Some very specific workflows uh, for people that want to cache in external drives or SD cards. Uh, or USB drives, right? They want to take their Flutter. Hey, I want to take my Flutter uh, versions with me on the go. And my use case is that, you know, I'll, I want to work on a laptop and I have uh, have it there. Right? I have my development workspace on my USB. Yeah, I'll ask for that now, right? So uh, the, the, the final, let's say, feature, high level features of uh, FVM is configuring uses the Flutter SDK version of a project, ability to install and cache multiple Flutter SDK versions, it does the fast switch between Flutter channels and versions, dynamic SDK paths for ID debugging support. So it works on, uh, as a first class citizen on, on ID. Uh, version of VM config with the projects for consistent across teams and SCI environments, meaning that if you have all the developers or you have a CI environment, you can make sure that all the dependencies and, and similar to how you have your packages, Flutter, the Flutter version that is there also, 
is, is uh, uh, the same that you ran on your machine. Uh, you can set global flutter versions across projects and you can view available versions for download and you can pretty much manage everything, all your flutter versions uh, locally. Okay, so we, we did, we created FPM to use internally and we, you know, made adjustments and changes and improvements because the community, we have also other dev tools that we've created in Dart. Uh, you know, one of the, the biggest challenges that we have uh, FN Hero is we have a, a bit of a app generation service or app customization service. So our build process is very unique per app where you have a core being built with assets being brought over. So we have a, a, a pipeline uh, of CLI tools that we also made using Dart, right? And one thing that we started thinking about, and we're very passionate in the company about, not so much about our product, but about the development process and the tools. You see that as technology needs to become more specialized, we, need start, we have to start creating these tools to automate these workflows. They're essential for development productivity. And sharing code and domain knowledge across environments and targets remain difficult and expensive. Uh, Dart and Flutter uh, quickly becoming the most suitable solution for this problem, right? So the, the fact that you have Dart, we has many different targets, right? And you can uh, compile from JavaScript to, to native machine code. And you have Flutter, which you can, you know, do now desktop apps and mobile apps. You have a very powerful stack to tackle uh, let's say an automation process across many different platforms, right? So in combine, you have the necessary tools to build CLIs, APIs, mobile, desktop, and web apps, while sharing the source code and the domain knowledge between them. So after FVM, let's say mature and the API felt like it was fairly complete, we wanted to take the time to explore this thesis, right? Can Flutter with Dart uh, deliver to its full potential on the desktop, because that's where dev tools are uh, running, right? And that's what we came out and we wanted to test, okay? And I love CLIs, I'm very productive with CLIs, and I know there's a lot of people saying like, well, I prefer the CLI, there's no need for a GUI. And there was a motivation behind it, which is to explore for the desktop, but I know that everyone here cares about GUI, right? I know everyone cares about GUI because that's why we're using Flutter, right? So as I like to say, this is, made for Flutter with Flutter, right? It doesn't get more matter than this. Okay, here's some of the GUI goals, right? First is explore uh, a one stack approach to dev tooling with Darn Flutter, right? How, how does that work exactly, right? Flutter desktop support current in alpha, can it deliver on its promise? How much domain knowledge and code sharing between different targets, right? How much, you know, uh, conditionals are we creating here? How, what is the debugging and testing process across these platforms? Can we keep the native performance and premium app view? And Mac, Windows, and Linux in the same code base, you know, literally uh, right once, run everywhere, you know, the, the promise. So that's what I set out to test out by doing the GUI. So first thing, and this is a highly complex detail architecture document, all right? Um, so, to separate is that the CLI uh, and the core APIs were pretty much the same, right? Uh, FVM was made to be used just as a CLI, right? So the first thing while exploring the desktop is, okay, now we essentially have two interfaces. We have a CLI and a GUI. And it means that we need to bring these APIs into a core so we can test and reuse. And this is a great use case for us because it gives an opportunity for you to have domain knowledge business logic and APIs in one place and have it open on how you choose to interface, right? So very simply, we moved the core, right? We separated the core and that's still taking place in the repository, but it's fairly separated even though it's not a separate project. We have the core API, we have the CLI, which exposes the API workflows through commands. And we are currently testing compiling to native binaries. So, uh, we already have on the dev staging, not to get sidetracked, but uh, installing a VM through Brew or, or Chocolati. Uh, and I think it'll be the easiest way for you to install Flutter uh, uh, going forward, right? And then we have the GUI 
you know, the graphical user interface, which would be the desktop app that would call the core APIs and manage its own states while enhancing functionality from the core API, right? And this is a very interesting exercise because another thing is that the CLI and the GUI needs to be 100% compatible. Someone is not use the GUI or the, the CLI. You need to be able to use both and you need to have one unique source of truth and switch in between. And if you wanna use the GUI, you can use the GUI. If you open up the CLI, everything is reflected there, right? So there's a few decisions we had to make to be able to support that. So here's some wireframes initially. We already knew the APIs, we already knew the functionality. So we start putting some wireframes, like what does this look like? And we saw that Flutter released the navigation array, which is great uh, for desktop. And I wanna show you guys, uh, just so I don't get way ahead, I would like to touch a little bit on the pros and cons, but I'm gonna show you a demo and it's actually a video. Uh, hopefully it, it displays uh, well for you guys. And this is a walkthrough of Deviant GUI. So I have my installed versions. I can switch between my projects and I can see all my Flutter projects there on this machine. I can go ahead and click and switch the pin versions on the project. I can see all the available versions there, there for download, right? Uh, if I go to advanced, I can also get the master version, right? I can go at any point, download the version and you have a console log to see exactly what is happening uh, behind the scenes. Uh, we have the settings, which this just gives visibility. This is the same settings that the CLI has and we expose them through a graphical interface. We have a search, so you can search. If you search for beta, it searches for the beta channel, projects using beta, and then it searches for beta versions. Or I can search for the project itself. So this is an easy way to see what projects are using versions or searching for versions. And this just came into like all these quick wins that we started to get by having a GUI, right? I can look at a version, I can see when the version was released, I can see a, a checksum for the version, right? We, we worked on responsive, right? A desktop needs to be responsive. So uh, we're using navigation rails and the drawer uh, components in order to do that. And it's an amazing experience. Uh, the, 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 and not so much because, you know, uh, I worked on it and I developed, but I was very surprised how you could bring all your knowledge from creating mobile apps uh, using Flutter into creating desktop apps, okay? So here's some takeaways and the pros, right? So in the implementation of the, from the core API was very easy and straightforward, right? No need to create tooling and other things like that. Building the Mac app experience was very smooth. So one of the biggest things, which I think it might change my workflow going forward, is if you're building a UI for Flutter, it's worth considering building, if you have a Mac, a Mac app. If you have a Windows, uh, a Windows app. Or maybe even as a kitchen sink. And the reason why is because the experience of you testing, debugging a desktop app is much better than an emulator or a simulator, right? So that's something that we're probably gonna bring it off to mobile apps, which is, can we go ahead and uh, uh, use the mobile, the desktop app as a way for us to test while developing because the performance is much better. The Flutter desktop plugins are coming along very well, right? Some of the things are needed from uh, uh, IO, uh, Windows, uh, you know, the a path provider, all these things that we need on apps, they're coming along very well and they seem uh, uh, very mature for our use case. Uh, the navigation rail widget, is perfect for desktop apps. As soon as they announced it, um, we saw, it's like, hey, can we bring this into the mobile app? You know, and we see mobile apps use it, but for the desktop app is, is, is a must, right? It just fits perfectly well. And obviously the, the guys at Flutter know that and uh, they've been working towards that direction. Performance is great, okay? Uh, for the most part, I'll touch on a couple different things. And the, I was able to run Windows version uh, with zero code changes. And I haven't used Windows in a while, so I actually installed Windows, set up the environment, right? I spend more time downloading the C++ distributors and uh, uh, um, Visual Studio because these are requirements than to actually develop the Windows version, right? So it worked with zero code changes, okay? 
here's some cons. Uh, and this is more, I don't think it's a Flutter problem, but it's FVM. It's difficult to debug different process behavior between platforms. And I think this is more related to Windows because Windows now has command, it has PowerShell, it has the new PowerShell, there's permission issues, and there's been weird different behavior between them. So this is a, something that is a specific case to IVM, but it, it probably where the most challenging uh, the challenge came from. Uh, FVM needs special privilege, right? Mac OS sandbox mode, Windows either administrator mode or as I prefer developer mode, right? To interact to file system and create the sim link, uh, which means that most likely you'll not see FVM go into the app store uh, because I believe that's one of the requirements that they have. The scrolling performance when using scroll wheel is not good on the Mac. However, when you drag it using the mouse and the scroll bar is as smooth as butter and I, I'll I'll show you guys a little bit of that. And also resizing window causes goal scene and stretch behavior, which take users out of the native field. So that's the only time you're gonna see behind the magic. And I have a couple of examples. So this is a window resizing issue that happens. And I believe it's being addressed, but as you resize the window and there's probably more work that can be done on this, but the workaround is that uh, things are being just stretched and it doesn't work like a native app would. It's fairly small. And to be honest, if you have the native macOS app Twitter, you can see a great workaround that they did. Uh, and they're not using Flutter, um, but they seem to blur while dragging it and then I'm blurring. So that's something to explore for the, uh, for the experience. But as you can see here, it just takes you out. And uh, I'm doing it over and over, but <laughs> it doesn't happen that often, right? It just happens when you resize. That's the only time you kind of see behind the curtain that is like, oh, this is not a native app per se, okay? And the next one is the scrolling performance. So this is the scrolling using the mouse when you drag, okay? And this is the dragging when you're using the scroll wheel. And the reason it's doing that is because when you're using the scroll wheel, it's just doing the delta of the movement and essentially doing it like a scroll tool on the list view. And that's why I have this weird behavior. Both of these issues have tickets open for them. But these, from a performance perspective, these are the only two things that I can think of. So here are some takeaways, and I think I'm right on time. Uh, Darn and Flutter are quickly becoming one of the stack solutions for many of our internal needs as a company. It's not just mobile app, okay, anymore. It's, there is benefit of having that domain knowledge and sharing source code between products and platforms. Uh, Florida continues to deliver on its promise of native performance on many different targets without target specific code for basic needs. Now, of course, there's a lot of plug-in, there are a lot of work that is being put by the community and the Florida team to make sure that there's not a lot of target specific code. For the, but for basic needs, there's no need for uh, to customize, right? We have a one open issue uh, on, on FVM saying, hey, why don't you have a Linux binary? And the reason why is because I, I, I wasn't able to test on Linux, but the person went in, they built it, they ran in Linux, I'm like, hey, it works. <laughs> they didn't just provide as a binary. So it literally it's working on Linux, the same way you have a Windows without uh, uh, changing, uh, you know, adding code, platform specific. Uh, uh, sharing code uh, between the domain is easy without impact on tooling and the next step is for us to explore a little bit on Flutter Web and Darts on the server side on how we can make sure that we close that loop uh, from that perspective. And guys, uh, I think I'm a little bit over my time, but yeah, again, uh, thank you very much for having me. It was good to talk to you guys about uh, FVM and you know, go to the repository, you know, uh, like FVM on uh, PubDev. Uh, FVM, because it's a tool and is installed, is not a dependency. Uh, the popularity will tend to linger, especially once we go into Brew, which is a much better way to install in native binaries. Yeah, but uh, if, if you're interested in this project, uh, see us on uh, the roadmap and uh, like and start the repository. And thank you very much.